Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is Why Did Mao Conquer Taiwan by the channel History Matters. In 1949, Mao won the Chinese Civil War and pushed the Kuomintang government into exile in Taiwan. But why didn't he finish the job and conquer the island, unifying China in the process? Okay. Uh, this is, uh, you know, interesting video for me at least because recently, uh, you know, uh, I didn't know much about Taiwan-China conflict. Obviously, because of the recent event, I started to read up on it. And I realized that, you know, Mao is the one who won this civil war when, you know, uh, democratic part of the China ran away to Taiwan. Mao was in charge of that, right? And Mao is the one who actually won. And I always thought like, okay, China is big ass thing, right? And China is, Taiwan is really small. So if uh, Mao was in charge at that time, why didn't he just went all the way? Because, you know, uh, Mao basically is the guy who killed the most people in the world or something like that, right? I mean, if you see the stats, like who killed how many people, Mao is the top of that. So I was like, okay, if some guy like that is in charge and he doesn't pursue Taiwan. Like, why did he let Taiwan, you know, exist in the first place? I was, I was under that. So this video is going to be interesting for me because of that reason. But yeah, uh, you know, the whole China-Taiwan conflict is, uh, you know, more layered than people would think of. Right. I mean, first, uh, Taiwan claims to be the sole government of entire China and Taiwan. I thought, like, why would you do that? But apparently, there's reason behind it. There's a you know genuine reason why. Because if they don't, that gives a reason, right, to China to basically uh, you know uh, de you know I don't I don't know exactly what somebody said, but you know just uh, declared on Taiwan that this is a rogue state to begin with. So there's a many political layer behind it. So yeah, let's watch this one. In 1949, Mao Zedong proclaimed the creation of the People's Republic of China. Whilst he was doing this, the Chinese Civil War was still raging on with the Kuomintang opposition fleeing to the island of Taiwan. And by 1951, all of mainland China and the island of Hainan was under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. Which raises the obvious question, why didn't Mao conquer Taiwan? Well, the first reason was that Mao still needed to consolidate the Communist Party's hold on mainland China. Now, the Communist Armed Forces, the People's Liberation Army, was about three times the size of the Kuomintang military, but numbers aren't everything. The PLA had a minuscule air force, whereas the Kuomintang had a modern one made up of mostly American fighters and bombers. Also, the PLA didn't have a navy, whereas the overwhelming majority of China's old ships had been taken to Taiwan. Mao stationed troops along what? the coastline and prepared for an invasion. So, like, we get this, all these people just fucked up to Taiwan, like, yeah, we're gonna take all the bombs boats and all the navy with us is that what happened that is so fucked up so mao didn't have the air force but you know good air force obviously taiwan had because probably it resonated with us or something right and taiwan also took the navy so you know that those two elements are out like how the fuck is mao supposed to attack taiwan it's an island right you, you don't have the navy right you don't have the air superiority either so yeah of the remaining Kuomintang positions, the closest of which were the Kuemoi Islands. When the go-ahead was given, the invasion was, to put it mildly, a disaster. This setback wasn't enough to deter Mao though, and he ordered plans for the final conquest of Taiwan to be drafted. The plan was to buy as many transportation vessels as possible and simply overwhelm the island with sheer numbers. Yeah, this plan okay. was scrapped because frankly, it was a stupid one, and also Mao was concerned that the USA would intervene if he invaded. Which he was right about because the United States placed its fleet between China and Taiwan and made it clear to Mao that any invasion would also mean war with them. However, by this point Mao had another issue to deal with since the Korean War had just begun next door. This saw direct fighting between China Chinese and American forces and importantly, saw US President Harry Truman commit to defend non-communist regimes in the area including Chiang Kai-shek's Kuomintang government in Taiwan. In 1953, a ceasefire ended the fighting on the Korean Peninsula and so Mao could turn his attention back to Taiwan. And boy did he, because the next year he ordered the shelling of the Kuemoi Islands, to which the Taiwanese government responded tit for tat. Things began to escalate and President Truman did three things. First of all, he sent reinforcements to Taiwan. Second, he and Congress passed legislation committing the US to defend Taiwan in the event of invasion. And third, he threatened to nuke China. This worked, and Mao, somewhat <laughs> opposed to being nuked, ordered his forces to desist. And this threat convinced... <laughs> yeah, well, the fucked up thing about it is that, uh, you know, in World War II, US actually f uh, bombed Japan, right? So, it's not... It's, nobody's gonna... Around this time, you know, definitely 1949 or whatever, around this time, nobody's gonna think like, oh, they're just bluffing. Yeah, just a few years ago, right, they literally just bombed Japan twice. 
It's such a, you know, Mao, even Mao is not going to be like, oh, they're just bluffing, I'm going to go on. Yeah, he's not going to do that. Since Mao of one thing, that China needed its own nuclear weapons if it was ever going to stand up <laughs> to the drooling. United States or ever hope to assert itself over Taiwan. However, before these nuclear weapons were finished, Mao ordered the shelling of the islands again, because at this point, why not? It was something to Wait do. Wait a minute, what? Okay, P-L-A-N. <laughs> okay, that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous, it's funny. The weapons were finished, Mao ordered the shelling of the islands again, because at this point, why not? It was something to do, I guess. This time, the Air Force is... That's, what do you mean, why not? The US just threatened them to, you know, if you do anything, we'll nuke you. And before China's nuke even finished, Mao just like, fuck it. So Mao didn't care at that point, even if China's cities gets nuked. Right? He's like, yeah, it's a reasonable losses or whatever. That's so fucked up got involved and hundreds of people died and President Eisenhower threatened to invade the mainland if things didn't calm down, which they promptly did. Now, this was the last time that China attempted to forcibly capture territory from Chiang Kai-shek. When Mao died in 1976, his successor preferred a policy of peaceful reunification. In the end, Mao didn't conquer Taiwan for one very simple reason. He couldn't. The US Navy sat between China and Taiwan and it was by far the most powerful in the world. And when Mao tried to use force, a new yeah, see, that's so fucked up in a way, right? I mean, obviously today things are different, but back then, you know, uh, China wasn't power of the world, obviously, right? So uh, certain people can run away to an island that is very close to China and China can't even get to that simply because they can't. They don't have the Navy, they don't have the Air Force. So Mao didn't, you know, conquer Taiwan because he literally couldn't, which is kind of <laughs> ridiculous when you really think about it. Nobody would see this, right? Anybody who's not informed on this topic would see this map and see there's China, gigantic China, this small Taiwan that's not that far away from China, right? And nobody would think, like, why didn't, they, why didn't they conquer them? Oh, because they couldn't. They literally couldn't cross there successfully. And obviously, USA was there. Um, you know, nowadays, uh, USA is helping Taiwan because of the obvious technology and all the resources Taiwan has that USA needs, all the chipset and things. But uh, that wasn't the case back then. Back then, it was a case of fighting communism. That was so strong, they're like, fuck it. We'll just support Taiwan and all the other islands like that. Nuclear retaliation by the United States was an ever-present threat. Not to mention that any attempt by Mao to take the island would have been costly in lives and money, which, given the fact he was trying to build a revolutionary government, was something that he needed more than Taiwan. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching. Yeah, it. he definitely needed it. I mean, imagine if there was disaster and lost lo lots of people, right? If he had lots of people, the P you know, the Taiwan government just swooped back in like, see, the, you know, these revolutionaries are idiots. You know, we are back or whatever. They can easily win people over like that. So, you know, Mao cannot afford to lose tons of people there. It would have been disaster PR in a way. But yeah. Right, well, that was why didn't Mao conquer Taiwan? Because he couldn't. I didn't see that coming. But yeah, this was where the channel History Matters. If you like my accent, don't forget to like, subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you next time.